talking to Local for All today. It's um, an amazing project that's being put on by the Cupcake Girls, a nonprofit group that you definitely want to know about. They're going to be building a food hall in the Arts District of downtown Las Vegas. So since we're talking about a food hall, we thought, hmm, why not? Let's talk about food courts because Louie and I are freaking 80s, 90s kids. <laughs> and the food court was a big deal back then, wasn't it, Lou? Yeah. <laughs> Mall rats, yo. Mall rats. Kevin Smith, shout out. <laughs> um, so the food court does not go back to the 80s and 90s from when uh, Louie and I were growing up. It actually goes back to the 1950s. Um, a very smart guy, James W. Rouse, coined the term shopping mall. And he was a major developer in the 1950s, and he wanted to create a space in that shopping center that kind of like was a community picnic. Huh. So that's the food court idea. Um, food courts. So my favorite food court item when I was a little kid, I, I don't know if I drink it now or not, but back then it was so delicious, the Orange Julius. Yes, the Orange Julius. I loved it so much. Um, I had no idea what was in it. I just thought orange and cream or whatever. So today I looked it up. Um, the beverage is a mixture of ice, orange juice, sweetener, milk, powdered egg whites, and vanilla flavoring. See, you know, I always <laughs> thought there were eggs in that thing. Is that why you didn't like it? Yeah, I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you that. I always thought there were eggs in that thing. Damn it. I mean, I still love the idea of it, and I'd probably, like, if you gave me one for free, I would definitely drink it. But I feel like my taste buds from back then were, like, definitely addicted to sugar. And so I bet you it's going to be very sugar for me. If I if I try to have it right now, I'd be so sugary, you know? So it's like a liquid meringue effect? Is that what they were going for? <laughs> well, remember how frothy it was? So it is what, it was yeah. like meringue you know? Yeah. Yeah, so it totally like makes that, sense that yeah. it's egg whites. Louis, what's yours, babe? Dude, mall. How could you like walk into a mall and out of a mall without like smelling Auntie Anne's pretzels? Yes, they, they're very distinct. Honestly, way better than like um, uh, Cinnabon. And to think that Cinnabon is actually like selling the cinnamon rolls. Auntie Anne's has this like flavor. I actually was thinking back in the day, they were like using the scent as like bait. Yeah, like Disneyland. <laughs> right? So anyway, three interesting facts. Um, it's a pretty young company. They were founded in 1988, and by 19, 20, 1992, they already had like 100 stalls. Not bad for pretzels, huh? Yeah, and they're still around. Yeah, totally. And then their original logo, which was like that pretzel, fun fact, one employee decided to like photocopy a pretzel, and that's what they used for their logo. Like so seriously, random. seriously. Like that's why the, the the first logo looked a little janky, and then I guess in 2006 they uh, replaced it. I haven't been to a mall for a very long time, but I am super excited about going to a food hall. There are actually yes. quite a few food halls popping up around town. Mm -hmm. um, some really cool ones that we'll be talking about over the next few weeks and months. But this one has a really cool element to it. Um, it actually gives back to the community as well, which is super awesome. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk with the Cupcake Girls about their local food sure. hall. Hello, everyone, and we are talking today to the Cupcake Girls, a Las Vegas nonprofit that provides resources for people in the sex industry and survivors of sex trafficking. We've got Ella Di Sabatino with us today, and we have Tony, the chef consultant for a brand new project called Local for All that they're doing. Hey, how are you doing, guys? 
So good. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, Thank great. you so Thank much you. for joining us. We're yeah. super excited about this. I'm so <laughs> glad that you reached out to us. First, let's talk about this Holistic Resource Center, Ella. Yeah. So Local for All stemmed from um, just the needs of the Cupcake Girls. So the Cupcake Girls, like you said, we are a 501c3 non-religious, non-political, non-profit. We have been in Las Vegas operating for nine and a half years, so almost 10 years. Wow. Um, yeah. And we are called the Cupcake Girls because we actually bake and deliver cupcakes. Um, so we bring every single month um, hot pink cupcakes to um, almost all of the strip clubs in Las Vegas, as well as in Portland. And our Portland branch does that. Um, and then also every month we go out to the legal brothels. We bring cupcakes as a way to just kind of let people know who we are, what we're doing, um, and just kind of giving a gift saying, hey, here is this little token of us. If you want to reach out, if you have a need, if you need a resource, if you want someone to talk to, we're here. Yeah, so we is it, it, is it, yeah. Is it one standard pink cupcake for yes. like the last 10 years? Does so it, over the past 10 years, the cupcake has changed a little bit. Um, when it started, Joy Hoover, our founder, um, is not a baker. So she would buy cupcakes um, okay. to bring them out. And now we have a volunteer team um, in both cities that bake our cupcakes. Um, years ago, we brought full-sized cupcakes out with us. They were full-sized cupcakes frosted with hot pink frosting, vanilla cupcake. And now they are mini cupcakes because a volunteer suggested they were a little more approachable and people started really resonating with a mini cupcake. So the cupcake is really just a symbol for us. Like you said, an icebreaker, it's a symbol for us of safety, of compassion, of our value of love without agenda. And just saying, hey, we're here if you ever need us. And that's our outreach. Um, we do that every single month. Now that the clubs and brothels are not open right now, we're um, doing a lot more virtual outreach. We now have 200 and something volunteers, 10 staff members, um, as well as hundreds of community partners that we reach out to that provide services, free holistic resources and services to our clients. So we have grown immensely over that time. But in that growth came wow, we've run out of space. So we have a thousand square foot office on Valley View and Sirius in Las Vegas. It's quite small. Um, we have clients coming in every day for um, meeting with their advocates and for trainings, as well as our volunteers coming in to do all kinds of stuff. And we've just outgrown that space. So over the past three years, this project of Local for All started to come to fruition. This idea that we could create a holistic resource center where all of these programs, services that we provide to our clients could happen in one safe and inclusive space. With that was, okay, well, if we're opening this giant resource center where people can be there, why not sell our cupcakes? We already make 80 dozen cupcakes a month when we're at our busiest. Why not sell those cupcakes and also create an income stream for our nonprofit? Over time, that has actually developed into this idea where, well, if we're going to be selling something and creating this kind of social enterprise, why not invite others to come into our space as well? So we found this building. Um, it is on Casino Center and Charleston, right on Charleston. Beautiful location right in the Arts District. We bought it with help of investors in December, and we are building Local for All. Half of it will be that holistic resource center. The other half will be a social enterprise food hall um, where we are inviting about seven different vendors to come into our space, including our cupcake shop, and be open to the public. And Tony, you're here because you're the chef consultant on this project. So tell us what you're hoping for for this food hall space, um, certain kinds of food, certain types of vendors, and also about this, um, so awesome, Louis, I love this, 10% uh, of the profits going to back toward your organization and back toward the nonprofit. Absolutely. Um, I, I was, I've was i been lucky enough to be part of this organization for a little over two years now. Um, I was brought on by Joy and Phil, her husband, um, back when uh, Local for All was just a thought. And um, I came on, I actually joined the board of directors on with a game plan of moving this thing forward. And I ended up becoming the chair for the last two years. I just stepped down as chair after my, my time was up. And now my focus is with Ella because we were able to, in that two years, we were able to buy the building. We were able to visualize and think about what it's going to be. And now we're able to actually put it together and um, we're in the true design phase. So um, as, as Ella said, we have 
we're looking at seven different spaces um, with our design team. Um, we we want to have our cupcake shop. We want to have a coffee shop, but not to to be intimidate and not to take over other coffee shops down there. We want to have um, we're designing a, a smaller cart that will have maybe some vegan options. We're going to have a um, we're probably going to be partnering with a with a nice wood stone pizza oven company in the back, so it's gonna eyes are gonna draw. So some kind of pizza concept. We're talking to a couple different chefs for that. Um, we have this great uh, soup and salad bar that we're talking about in the front as soon as it comes in, and then a juice bar, a, a um, ice creamery um, some, with some really well-known, I don't want to uh, spoil any, any uh, names yet, but we're talking to some already established companies with some new startups, some, some food trucks, some people that are just really up and coming that are excited to get in, but more importantly, they're excited about what, who the Cupcake Girls are and, and what we do. So as we were talking about how does this venture work and how are we going to make it a for-profit? Are we going to make it a nonprofit? Um, and we decided that the nonprofit was 100% the way to go um, to keep it with uh, who we are. Um, we will support the Cupcake Girls. We're not going to be in there to, to set the world on fire. We're going to be in there to, one, support the Cupcake Girls, and two, support the community and bring in and eventually br uh, start a training program um, with our clients and and. and only partner with groups and chefs and and restaurateurs that believe in it and will do the same um we said okay so we'll keep the 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 price low um the rent lower we're going to depend a lot on our on our donors we're going to de depend a lot on on uh on fundraising but we're also going to our donors are going to have to sign on to, we want to give back to the community as well and give back to the cupcake girls. So every 10% of, of every dollar that's spent. So 10 cents on every dollar is going to go directly to the cupcake girls as a nonprofit. And it's going to, it's going to feel special. And, and I was lucky enough to travel with joy and try and see some of these different nonprofit, the first nonprofit pub up in, in Portland and, mm -hmm. and to see how they're doing it and really get inspired by it. And it, when people see what it is um, and people understand it's more than just food, it, this is something bigger, um, it becomes something really special. And, and so we're really excited. We want people to walk into this space and be like, wow, when I walk into this space, when I buy a coffee, when I buy a salad, when I grab a cupcake, every time I do that, I'm giving back to my community. And we know that that's something that people just are really going to resonate here. Definitely. Leading into the next question, which is mm -hmm. your founder and CEO of Cupcake mm -hmm. Girls, Joy Hoover, as you talked about, says her goal, and I love this, <laughs> is to activate people who give a shit. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, we, the two sharp chefs, give a shit because, you know, we're, our goal has always been to build community among chefs and restaurants. Uh, why do you guys give a shit? I don't believe that there are people that don't give a shit. They just don't know what they give a shit about yet. Um, and that community and that um, being able to walk into a space and learn from, and, and I won't give any too many details, but one of our vendors that um, is signing on is actually going to be um, working with young adults with intellectual disabilities and helping them with job training. And so, um, you know, you're going to walk into the space and you may interact with one of our clients who's a sex worker, and maybe you haven't interacted with that person, or maybe you're going to go to another vendor and interact with someone with an intellectual disability. And, you're going to learn and you're going to realize that people are people and that we all have things we care about, that we all have passions um, for life and for giving back. And hopefully the goal is that this space changes people and that it really does activate people. One of our slogans is activation over awareness because we know awareness mm. is so important for issues. But without action, awareness doesn't really do anything. So sure, when you walk into our space, you're going to learn about sex trafficking because that's something we deal with every single day. But you're also going to learn how you can be activated to do something about sex trafficking or another issue in our community. Absolutely. Wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. I really feel like the Arts District is just like the perfect place for this. It's this revitalization of, of what Vegas should be, not necessarily what it was, um, and it, because I've seen, I've seen it at worst, and I think I've seen it at its best. I don't know. I've been around a while. Um, <laughs> what this is going to be now what's coming down there and with the with the, the brewery district and with with this local for all it's going to um be more it's going to be something special and better and and we found these we we, we actually looked at too many buildings downtown that it just we'd go in and and oh this is a perfect building but the price wasn't right and then we found out that the foundation and the, and 
when, when we walked into this building, we saw the roof, we saw the neighbors, we saw the location. It, it, it just, things started opening. And we think of the Arts District really as the heart of Las Vegas. Um, something that we love about it, and actually Joy and me um, and our director of marketing all live within walking distance of the building. We all live downtown. We love oh. the Arts District. Um, something that we really love about it is it's this space that really seems to be being built for locals. It's being built for the community of Las Vegas. And yes, we want tourists to come in and be a part of this community, but it's, it's different. It's new. Um, and so we're just really excited to be building something during this time of change, during this time of building in the Arts District, and that we're creating something that is really built for and by the community. This is a huge community project. We've had more than 3,000 individuals donate to this project. We've also um, working with multiple construction companies that never sit down at the same table, who all sat at a table with us together to say, how can we help? How can we build this project with you or for you? Um, the Nevada Contractors Association has taken us on as their kind of nonprofit that they're supporting and helping us build this project. Um, our architects and engineers and people who are just flooding our email saying, how can we help? How can we be a part of this? So it's really bringing together this greater community of people saying, we're going to do this with you. Which is the awesome. title of your building. It's yes. Three words, local for all. You talked about a lot, a lot about local. Let's talk a little bit about for all. Yeah. Yes. And what that means to you, inclusiveness, because there is a deep divide right now mm -hmm. um, between many people who believe in that and a few people that don't. So how, how can we bridge that? How, how do we bridge yeah. that? I know it's a so, difficult question because we're all trying to figure this out, but I mean, yeah. it's in the name of your building, you know? It is in the name of our building. Our slogan is you belong here. And we want people to feel that they belong here, no matter who they are, when they walk into our space, you belong. Um, we are doing this in a few different ways. One is by building a coalition of people of different voices of different community members um, who need to have a voice at the table, who need to be brought to the table to help us, whether that's you know, people coming in and saying, hey, yeah, sure, you follow ADA, you know, rules for how big the door can be, but sometimes a wheelchair is bigger than that, or sometimes a person can't get through, or so talking to people in the disability community, talking to and making sure that all different voices, um, gender and races are part of this conversation from the beginning. So we have a coalition of people and a team of people that we're building saying, hey, have you thought of this? And we're listening. Um, the Cupcake Girls started, um, you know, and we started to support sex workers. Um, but we didn't come in and Joy, our founder, didn't come in and say, hey, I know what you need. She came in and said, let me just listen. She was a hairdresser. So she was doing hair and makeup for people and listening to people in brothels, in the clubs, at AVN and different um, conferences and just saying, what do you need? So the Cupcake Girls was built around this idea of helping marginalized communities by asking questions and by listening first and foremost. Then creating and working together with the community to create resources for people once they said their needs. And that's how Local for All is built and that's the foundation of where we're coming from. On a light note, yeah? we, need, we need parking downtown. Oh, uh, drawbacks. Right. <laughs> I told you, Lorraine, this is very important. Yeah, it's, 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 oh. that's one of the drawbacks because, like, that's why people yep. from, like, the suburbs can't, like, really enjoy downtown because there isn't, like, really ample parking, especially so, during First Fridays. <gasps> yeah, during First Fridays, it's a, it's a mess. One of the reasons I wanted to be within walking distance of Arts District was so that I didn't have to deal with the parking. Right. But it is a conversation. We have really amazing connections with the city and are working with the city. Um, and then we also, our architect is working with the city to help create some parking options as Ooh. well. So fingers crossed there will be maybe a lot or maybe a garage in the next year or two. But the other part of it is helping the local community understand that in, in major cities, normally driving around and finding parking or having to pay for parking is actually a norm. Yeah. Um, I moved here from New York City and before that lived in Philadelphia. So uh -huh. for me, I was like, yeah, of course you drive around for 10 minutes and find parking. And yeah. the other people here are like, there's no parking lot. Yeah, <laughs> so right. I know. So we're, we're really <laughs> we hoping are. that that kind of the culture of it's okay that 
you know, there isn't parking right inside our building, you'll still yeah. make your way there. And hopefully you'll see some other really cool stuff along the way because you did a, a lap where you had to walk little ways. That's true. Get out of your yeah. car and start walking, <laughs> right? Because we're a chef and food podcast, we got to ask both of you um, about food downtown. So you're going to be building mm -hmm. this food hall and you're going to be building, be building this amazing space. But uh, what's your favorite downtown food or beverage place? By and far, our neighbor, uh, Cornish Passy, just blows it away every time I go in there. They, I love what they're doing. Um, I try something new every time, and they never let me down. And we're really excited to have them as neighbors. But I'm also a big fan of Rebar. I, we go in there, and we have a uh -huh. lot of fun. and We put down some Tullamore Dew, and have, and it's just a good good experience. I love it in there. It's just a good Really great vibes. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Ella? Yeah. So – by far for food. I just love Esther's Kitchen. Um, yes. And James has actually been a really great partner of the Cupcake Girls. Um, in January, we did this campaign where we asked 10 different restaurants and bars and, and places around Vegas to um, pick one item on their menu and donate proceeds from that to the Cupcake Girls. And they did this amazing cocktail. They raised $1,300 for us. And I have never gone in and not had a delicious meal, whether it's lunch or brunch or dinner. We always take friends from out of town there. Yeah. Um, for drinks, I really love Jamuland. It's one of my favorite cocktail bars. Um, they just do a really, really awesome kind of tiki bar lounge style, great music, cool vibes. Ooh, I'm going to have to try that. I've never been there. Yeah, I've never been to Jamuland yet. Yeah, oh, yeah they're reopening so soon. They've been closed for a couple of months, but I know they're reopening really soon, so you've got to check them out. Thanks for the recommendation. Awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to show and tell. Yeah. Start with Ella. It's okay. time. What do you got for the class? <laughs> so um, I actually brought my favorite cup ever. It's Cupcake oh. Girls branded. <laughs> um, so everyone on our staff has these cups. Um, Joy found it on Amazon or online somewhere, and she read one of the reviews. And somebody said, I would literally die for this cup. <laughs> and so she had to buy it because how do you not buy that cup? And we, every single one of us bring them every day. It's the best way to make sure you're drinking water because it's fun to drink out of. It doesn't leak. Um, Does I don't it? know. I mean, it literally sounds Ever? like I'm like, okay, if I have a straw in it, it leaks a little. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> but it comes with a tight cover too. We put our branding on. In Local For All, you'll be able to buy these cups. Um, we'll actually, the company, uh, Simple Modern, will actually do them for us. So we'll buy them branded and sell them in Local For All. All right, Tony, the chef. Your Jonas. turn. All right. Show well, us what you got for show and tell. I've done a few tastings in my life and tried, I when I do a tasting, I try and make it as fun as possible. I don't do the norm. I don't, I try and just get weird. Um, I found this 18 years ago in a uh, thrift store. It's called an egg cuber. Whoa! It makes, it makes square eggs. Um, what? So I uh, I will like soft boil an egg, okay. and then you kind of take it apart, and you you peel the egg, and then you put it in, and you then press it uh -huh. on there, and it sits, and then you slowly compress it, and okay. Like six minutes later, you have a square egg. Oh, yeah, that's it's, true. And then you cut it open. It's just, it's one of those fun culinary, culinary things that I yeah. show chefs and they're like, where the heck did you get that? That's and amazing. I tell them Sabres 18 years ago now. Um, yeah. And I keep it around. It gets in my toolbox. That is so cool. Uh, not a lot of people know that like soft boiled eggs are like pliable when you first take them out of the shell. Yeah. There's actually um, like little bento box molds where you can like shape them yes. into like bunnies Hearts and stuff and like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, like that's Star awesome. Wars one. That's crazy. Like, yeah. Asian. But <laughs> by far, by far, Tony, that is the most like sophisticated and soigné egg shaper that I've seen. Yeah. This is legit. This is yeah. legit. Like, I would love a cubed egg. That's yeah. awesome. We can have like five yeah. next week, right? Like you can, right. you you can stack them. We that can be like oh, a part yeah. of like your your, you know, like yeah. like a stack, Lego stack egg sculpture or something like that. Yeah. yeah. People are like gravitating towards like stacked waffles. You can do stacked eggs. I That's love amazing. it. And there you go. Right? Oh. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move on to On The Fly. Ah. Louis, get your timer ready. It is 60 seconds rapid fire questions. And you have to say the first thing that comes to your mind. Louis, are you ready? I I'm going to have you and Ella first. 
Okay. Go. Ready, go. Your favorite kind of cupcake? Pumpkin. Quarantine comfort food? Ooh. Actually, it was watermelon because I was pregnant the whole time. <laughs> if you had a superpower, what would it be? Ooh. I don't know. Probably, I'm flying. <laughs> flying? Yeah. That's a good one. Favorite yeah. holiday? Mm. Thanksgiving. Cat or dog person? Both. Oh, good. Bipetual. Mm -hmm. Most used emoji? Uh, the kissy face. Okay. Dream place to travel and eat? Dream place, India. Childhood food craving? Ooh, cheese it Me too. <laughs> Best self-care move? Mmm. Vegging out. And most inspiring music. Oh, Go ahead. Most inspiring music. Yeah. Or what do you listen to? Oh, what's your jam? I listen to a little of everything. I really I like listening to folk, um, like old school folk. But inspiring, I think, is probably jazz, just because it's so well done. On the fly with Tony. Sixty seconds rapid fire. Question starting now. Your favorite kind of cupcake? Um, it's gonna be chocolate with light frosting. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Getting my kids to sleep. Getting them most, through the night, yeah. Yeah, most awesome. inspiring music. Uh, For your kitchen, do that. Uh, punk rock, it. for sure. Best self-care move? Sleep. Childhood food craving? Um, Italian food, lasagna, handmade spaghetti. Carbs. Quarantine comfort food? Um, it has been everything everything under the under, we're cooking everything we possibly can <laughs> cat or dog person i am a cat person most used emoji uh right there <laughs> dream place to travel and eat loaded question for a chef croatia i have been really inspired oh, lately oh, by uh, nice. the yugoslavia whole peninsula and croatia yeah last thing favorite holiday uh, now that I'm a dad and a family man and a husband, it's Christmas by far. It's the, the, the smiles and the love and, and what we give and, and make it truly a, a great day. Oh, I love that. Okay, Ella, let's go ahead and sell it for Cupcake Girls and, of course, for your special project, Local for All. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are, um, this project is moving forward. We are in the design phase, but we are working on getting our building permits, um, looking to be doing construction by late August, early September, which means we're looking for vendors in our space. Um, we're looking for people to be full-time renting a, you know, around 200 to 300 square foot booth, booth rental. Um, and we're also looking for people to just join us, be a part of this, donate to this project, um, donate your skills, your time. Um, but we are accepting applications for vendors now in um, downtown Las Vegas' first food hall. And tell us how to reach you because I'm sure that there are a lot of people in our audience that would like to help. Yes. So um, together at localforall.org is the best way to reach us. It's in our email together at localforall.org. Um, we have a website, but the Cupcake Girls website is probably the best. If you search Google search the Cupcake Girls, um, you can also follow us on Instagram, um, Cupcake Girls Org or Local For All. Um, Facebook and Instagram. We are always updating people on what we're doing, how we're doing it, um, some fun photos of construction, building, all of that. Thank you so much, yeah, Ella awesome. and Tony. Thank you so much for your time today. We wish you so many good vibrations, good vibes toward this amazing cause of yours. Thank you so much. We're just yeah. so excited to share the word and get people talking about this project. <laughs> Thank you.